Um, up next, one brave woman will face her fears, shaving her head for an incredible cause. Uh, she's next. I got your back when you And the love kick starts again Starts again And the love kick starts again OK, we are uh, 13 minutes away from 8 o'clock. Lovely to have you along today. Up next, uh, one brave woman will face her fears um, shaving her head uh, for an incredible cause. Uh, we'll look at that very shortly. It is um, 12 minutes away from 8 o'clock. It's the AM Show on 3, Magic Talking Online. If you're watching on the television, don't forget, you can get us on the radio uh, as well. It is, um, you text 3920 um, and we are there. It is uh, Magic Talk, OK? That is us. Every four hours. A New Zealander is diagnosed with leukaemia or blood cancer. Our next guest has experienced this um, firsthand with the loss of her partner. And then, incredibly, her mother uh, died from the same cancer. Kelly Shrimpton joins us ahead of um, Shave for a Cure Week, the big fundraising event from Leukaemia Blood Cancer uh, New Zealand. Um, Kelly, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right, thank mm. you. Well, unbelievable. It Isn't is it? That you, you, quite. So you lost your partner when? In 2006. He was 31. And what was the cancer? It was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. OK, then your mum? The same? Mum, yeah, mum passed away in July last year of the same thing. 11 years and 11 months to the day after Nick died. Oh, goodness. What sort of cancer is it? What is it? It's lymphoma. Um, it's a blood cancer. And um, there's a lot of different types of, of lymphoma and of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Mm. Um, Mum had mantle cell lymphoma, um, and yeah, it was, um, starts in the blood and affects the bone marrow. And yeah, yeah, and you'd been through it before with um, with Nick, with your Nick. partner. You must have wanted to say, "Hang on a second, what have I done to deserve, or our family done to deserve this a second time?" You start to wonder. Yeah, the, <laughs> you look at the um, common denominator, and yeah. um, you just have to not think about. That really, and I had to work really hard to remind myself when Mum was first diagnosed that this isn't the same story. Right? That you know, yes, it's the same disease, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go the same way. And you know, I had to try and stay in the moment and deal with what was happening in front of me, rather than. And how much of when you were fighting with your mum? You know, when I say fighting, fighting the yeah, yeah. <laughs> with your mum, um, did your mind keep going back? Yeah, a lot. It, and more so at some times than others. Um, there were times along the path with her treatment that specifically she had a stem cell transplant and um, as she was sort of recovering from that in hospital, she started having fevers a lot and right. Nick had had, that was his main symptom of the disease was fevers. And so that became very um, scary. It was like, oh my goodness, we're back in back. the same situation. Yes. We're looking for causes. You've had a hellish... 10 odd years, haven't you? 15 years. It's been a challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's saying something. Tor, yeah. Tell us about your husband and how it came on and how he dealt with it, you know, being just 31 years old. Yeah, he, he was my partner. He, um, as I say, his symptoms were that he had fevers and um, they couldn't find a cause for the fevers. Uh, we were in Dublin at the time and um, there was an extended period of just hunting for an infection because that was the most likely cause of fevers um, and it went on and on and it um, got really scary it got to the point he couldn't walk to the end of the ward and you sort of have to start stomping your feet and saying we're not getting anywhere what you know I'm scared what's going on and um, eventually he was diagnosed with non Hodgkin's was, lymphoma. Was there, was, there, was, there much in, um, was there much help for you you came back to New Zealand? I did Nick was English right. and um, so he was moved from Dublin to, to England. Right, and yeah. you um, went with him? No, I it, um, when he, it was time for him to go back to England, he said to me, I really want you to go home so that you're with your friends and family and oh, I don't have to worry about you. Heartbreaking. It was, it oh, was. And, <laughs> thank you. I was you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Myself. It, it was... Um, it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Mm. And um, that was before he was diagnosed with lymphoma. And so the theory was he was going to get better and come to New Zealand and we were going to carry on like nothing had happened. Mm. And um, you dreamt it. just after I got home, he was diagnosed. And then six weeks later, he passed away. 
Oh, oh did the... you get to see him? Were you able to get back in time? No, I didn't get back, and um, I didn't get to go to the funeral, which was really hard too, and I don't think I realised how hard that was until I went through it with Mum, and it was a different experience, and um, then it just made me look back and think, actually, that was really hard. Like, it felt hard because it was, <laughs> um, as opposed to looking back and beating myself up for... How let's, let's, hard do, it was. Let's, let's do something in his memory uh, and your mum. So, uh, can we shave your head? Yes. Because is, is that's what we do for leukemia and for blood cancer. Um, we're going to shave it all off. Are okay. you nervous? Quite. <laughs> yeah. um, just, just one from me. You obviously got a very a personal story, uh, and, and here you are sharing it publicly. Um, what, what, what's the goal? Of, you know, and, and now you're about to do something. You know, <laughs> put me outside ridiculous. your comfort zone yeah. a little bit. Well, what, what's the ultimate goal? The goal for me, the, the big goal, is um, for research to be funded that means that people don't have to die from this. And that is a big goal and, you know, the, this is alone is not going to get us there. But to raise money um, for research and for support, you know, the difference for me, um, or a difference for me between when Nick was sick and when Mum was sick was having the support of Leukaemia and Blood Cancer New Zealand. Were and they good? Like, they were amazing. They tell you lots of things? They they provide these booklets yeah. that have all of this information and for me that was really important. I needed to know mm. the details because that was my way of coping and it meant I could help Mum to understand as well. So the detail um, that we'll tell you now is that what we'll do with your hair is that we will um, shave it, it'll fall off, it'll go into the ground, <laughs> and it will take um, weeks and weeks and weeks, and weeks to go back. Do you know that I feared that Duncan was actually going to do it? And I, I, thought I think he should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are a brave lady. Oh, no, his own, I mean. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. that well, year. You can ask Mark about that because I turned up at Mark's house um, with a skinhead once. Yeah, and the dog didn't like it. The dog didn't. <laughs> but actually, without sounding creepy, I think you're going to look good, actually. There's, there's, a, there's a little bit of Sinead O'Connor going on there, I reckon. Do I get the accent? <laughs> You've got good features, and you're already shaved on one side at the moment, and it, you rock it, so Would you like to put a complaint in about Mark? We can... We've got, <laughs> no? There's an HR department. It's a compliment. <laughs> of course it is. Um, OK, so Debbie's going to look after you with the hair. Um, thank you for coming to the AM Salon. <laughs> <laughs> and for um, being so brave as well. And, and all the best, because um, I sense that... Um, there's still a lot of recovering to, to go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a process. Talking's a good thing. It is. Yeah. Nice to nice to meet you. Nice to see you and all the best. Thank you. Stay strong. Yeah. Thanks. If not a um, little bit cool heading into a sort of autumn with um no here. <laughs> good luck with that. Um if you'd like to support Kelly and donate to her page, go to um shave for a cure and search for Kelly Shrimpton. Um she would um, most appreciate your support. Uh, news is next plus the panel. We're talking to Petra Bagus from the Parenting Place and Lawyer Marcus Beveridge. We're playing nine and ten as well. Stand by. I believe in starting over I can see that your heart is true I believe in love you give me reason to Opinion in spades and conversation of plenty On 3, Magic Talk and online with our partner chorus It's the AM Show Okay, welcome back. It is uh, Wednesday the 6th of March, uh, the AM show. A cut above the rest. We're off to Christchurch uh, for a game of nine and ten shortly. Uh, the panel joins us shortly as well. Uh, Kai Kudalu for Parenting Place. Uh, Petra Bagris and lawyer Marcus Beveridge will discuss bank profits and the correct way to wash dishes. Uh, Mr Beveridge, do you know how to wash dishes? And then after 8.30 we um, find out uh, the top baby trends for 2019, although I'm not planning anything in that area. <laughs> Just before nine, uh, we get advice on the rights and responsibilities of tenants and also... Um, how to complain if you get a bad haircut as well. And not that you'll be getting one here on the AM show, a bad haircut, you'll get a good one. Kelly Shrimpton, you're in the hot seat this morning and getting your hair um, cut for uh, blood cancer. Uh, Leukemia New Zealand, there we go. How's it going? All right, Kelly? You OK, Kelly? You're surviving? Yeah, it's, yes? It's going. It's going, all right. It's going, 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 gone. How's that yeah. feel? Are you nervous? Yes, quite. Yes, it's coming off. Well, there's still quite a lot there. Um, we need that chopped off, don't we? What do you reckon your partner and your mum would think of this? I think they'll be somewhere laughing their heads off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're suiting it so far. It's looking good. Thank you. So far, you'll suit it right the way through. We will come back to you um, shortly as well. It's 8 o'clock. It is news time. Very good morning to you. Thank you, Mark. Let's cue the shaver. Let's cue the shaver. Let's get the shaver going again. Um, Kelly, how far down the, uh, the track are we with, with, um, with the hair? 
We're getting there. I think we're making progress. We're getting there. We need to, Debbie. Is there, is there much here to come off, Debbie? Debbie. Um, well, I think you can help us with this other side, Duncan. You want me to come along with the? What are they called? Cloppers. No, what are those things? Clippers. <laughs> clippers. Oh, clippers. Cloppers. Cloppers. How long would it take to grow the hair back to its current level? Uh, well, usually about two years for this amount of hair to grow back. Another yeah, two years, two to three years. Kelly, you're very lucky because your features actually suit that short haircut. I wouldn't be able to get away. That's with lucky, it. isn't it? It's gorgeous. <laughs> Could yeah. it come back a different colour? It'll come back darker, won't it, to start uh, with? Grey. There's, there's, <laughs> there's a few sparkles in there, so yep, two years of, of life will we'll tell. Hey, hey, Mark, you were right about Sinead O'Connor. Oh, yeah, Absolutely yeah, bang yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, similar um, features. <laughs> I was, about, I was about to say, um, oh, I'm glad I'm not a Kennedy, but no, that's not, that's some um, shining name. Yeah. But oh, it looks good. It looks good. There's still a wee way to go. I think it suits you. Thanks. <laughs> Are you going to go help, Duncan? Sorry, what was that? Yes. Duncan, would you like Duncan to help have a little shave? He's welcome to. Hey, yes, go exactly. on, do it, Duncan. I will be there. You save me some? You save, you save me some. I will save, save me the, some. Save, save me the, um, the bit at the front there. I'd love to put a mullet on you or something like that anyway. Um, it is, oh, I'd love to do a mullet. No, you're not saying You could do the that. last cut. It's always the deepest. Yeah, <laughs> you got me there. That's yes. where I was going. Thank you very much. Well Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Eight minutes past eight. Oh, I forgot we were up to. I think it must be you, Amanda. I got pure intentions. OK, welcome back. Um, good to have your company on um, 3. Magic talking online, of course, some um, 16 minutes after 8. Um, just got a bit excited there. I quite like the job of hairdressing. It could be quite a good job, actually. Um, uh, lawyer, uh, Marcus Beveridge and um, Kai Kudadol for Parenting Place. Petra Bagus are with us on the panel this morning. Lovely to see you here. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Do you like a haircut? Uh, she looks so beautiful. It Doesn't almost she? appeals. Yes. Yeah, you look gorgeous. Almost appeals. It's like Sinead O'Connor. Mark, uh, no, right. no, the Sinead O'Connor moment, that dream mm. that you could actually look great mm. with no hair. Mm. Have we got a mirror? Did, is there a mirror around somewhere? Mark, you've got... You carry, you carry one? <laughs> <laughs> in, his back, uh, in his back pocket. Are you surprised that, that I managed to sort of... Do you know cotton on to thought she's going to look like Shannon O'Connor? No, but you picked it very early. Which I have an hiding. amazing eye for these types of things. Mm. You mm. imagine women without hair all the time? Mm. It's just um, <laughs> I, I have a, I have a I don't know a sixth sense for fashion. Mm. Uh, yeah. um, so um, so um, creeped residence. <laughs> and his modesty is just as good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Raising money for a good cause. Yeah. Ba bank profits. Speaking of money, bank profits are massive in this country. So 5.1 billion dollars. The four big Aussie banks. Um, it, I want you to think about this for, for a moment. 5.1 billion dollars of New Zealanders' money we give to the banks and they take off shore back to their country. What do you reckon? 